Damien Hirst is a successful British artist. He was raised as a Catholic, which later on in his art, his religion would affect his artwork. As a teenager, Hirst was drawn into pathology books, and then he was fascinated by the images of injuries and diseases. During his teenage years, he was also passionate about drawing, which his mother supported him for. When he was young, his father left his mother and affected Damien due to his mother getting very ill. After his father left, so he turned to art to express his feelings. He wanted to be a painter at that time, but when he moved out of his mother's house, he moved in with one of his friends and got a job as a construction worker. But at that one point, looked around and saw that he didn't see himself doing that forever. So he went out to rent a studio and in that moment he had a neighbor who lived next to him and saw him every day with a bag and would go around the neighborhood and pick up stuff and bring back to his apartment. One day Hearst did not see him for a while so he went over the man's apartment and saw piles and piles that touched the ceiling of stuff. Which then he realized the man was a hoarder. So Damien looked around and would take stuff back to his studio and make collages. Which led him to making three dimensional art with life and death meaning. During college, he studied art at the Goldsmiths University of London. In college, he started a group of young artists and created an artwork called Freeze. This artwork consisted of 16 students that came together. It took place in an empty London port at Surrey Docks. Damien Hurst states, I found I could work with already organized elements, and I suppose in Freeze, the artists were kind of already organized elements in themselves, and I arranged them. Hurst and the 16 other classmates that were known as young British artists became popular for using unusual materials for their artworks and challenging art concepts. I will be turning to one of Hearst's most recent works, the instantly infamous For the Love of God. This artwork consists of a human skull that he bought from a shop called Get Stuff. He was drawn into the skull because he wanted to change the world's view. By that, he means the way people view death, which to everyone, death is negative and black. According to Hearst, what is the maximum against death? Diamonds. Money. Borrowing elements from contemporary pop culture, the very fact that the skull is encrusted with diamonds mirrors the beliefs and perhaps non-beliefs of Western society today. The greed of the corporate worlds, the media and public and political obsession of money, power and status. On June 1st, 2007, For the Love of God went on display in an illuminated glass case in St. James, London. 6.7 by 7.5 inches, Hearst has changed the object, morphing it into an eye-catching, glittery, conversational piece by covering it with 8,601 real diamonds. This skull is three-dimensional and symmetric. This skull was placed on sale for the sum of an estimate of 50 million. The skull is covered with diamonds inside and out. The large diamond in the center of the human skull is from a comic he used to read called 2080. The focal point is the large diamond in the center of the forehead of the skull, which is known as a skull star diamond. The skull shows texture from diamonds with diamonds and the teeth. The diamonds all over the skull have a visual texture as they can be seen as rough when touching the skull. There is a pattern of an eye that is made with a large pear-shaped diamond in the forehead. The pale teeth came from the original skull. They are a spectacle. They smile at you with weird, sinister mockery. The colors are a mixture of all primary colors, which in this artwork are black and platinum. The negative space of black in the background of the skull sets the mood of darkness, sadness, and grief. The black expresses how a person would feel when seeing a skull, but when they see it with diamonds, it gives the skull life again, somewhat of a disco ball. It portrays more of an uplifting emotion with diamonds. Most people don't like to think of death because they are scared. Damien Hurst's drive for death continued through his art as he created a second skull full of diamonds, but this time it is an infant skull. You think, wow, an infant, right? This skull is called, for heaven's sake, made it in 2008. It is a platinum skull with pink and white diamonds inside and out. Although this skull does not have its teeth since it was an infant, this infant skull was estimated to be between 40 and 42 weeks of age when Hearst purchased it from a pathology collection. I used to read a comic book at school called 2000 AD and it had a character in it called Tharg who had a kind of mind stone in his forehead. He was a powerful godlike figure who controlled the universe. When I came along and started making art, I was like, I wanted to change the world. Every artwork that's ever interested me is about death. I 
I thought was the maximum you could pit against death, and then, you know, diamonds came to a line. Uh, he ended up approaching Bentley and Skinner to make it for me, and they have uh, an appointment to the Queen. Wow. Is that all? Is it kind of held together? I see. It is, but it's just pins and glues, so uh, be careful. Just don't go straight around. I love it. I got the skull from uh, a shop called Get Stuffed in uh, Islington. And it was quite hard to find a skull that actually just said, I'm a skull, and not said anything else. Because we're dealing with death, which is so negative, it has to be totally positive, and you can't cut corners, and it's just got to be, you know, ridiculous in its, um, in its perfection. We took the original skull, removed the teeth, had the teeth cleaned up by a dentist and cast the whole skull in platinum. The idea for titling it For the Love of God came from my mother who used to say that whenever I had crazy ideas. For the love of God, what are you going to do next? But I had no idea really what it would look like or how it would be perceived and I had a big fear that it was going to end up like, you know, some sort of tacky piece of jewellery. But it has a kind of quietness and a kind of sort of transcendent feel to it. You know, it's sort of mesmerising and optimistic. That's the really shocking thing for me. Because it's like such a sort of negative subject. That I really thought it would be dark, but it isn't at all. Now let's continue with his death drive. Hearst has shown many medicine cabinets and prescription drugs. His passion for this came due to his mother being very ill and his grandmother passing from lung cancer. His grandmother, before she passed, left Hearst with a package full of prescription drugs and he did not know what to do with them until he saw they were all different colors so he decided to use them. Each artwork shows titles of sinner, followed by enemy, followed by God, and many more. He felt like prescription drugs were the heart of a person because that's what they would turn to when they felt helpless. Hearst has stated medicine cabinets explore the distinction between life and death, myth and medicine. Damien Hurst is seen here with a head titled With Dead Head. It is dated in 1981. He is pictured here in the School of Leeds Anatomy, where he regularly visited to make life drawings. Hurst has described when he was a teenager he wanted to see dead bodies, so he went to the morgue and he seen them but felt so sick that he felt he was going to die. But he would still go back and draw them. He explained it like he was holding death beside him. Hearst is obsessed with the thought of death and living which he shows in his artwork by showing them cut in half and placed in four multi-high liquid. He shows real cadavers in gallery settings to confront viewers with the implicable fact of death. Damien Hearst became famous for his artwork on preserving dead animals and has included cows, sheep, sharks, butterflies, flies, horses, fish, and more. Damien Hearst is a conceptual artist because his work most often takes precedence over and um, traditional matters or ideas. This is shown by his work with dead animals and preserving them, which is most often frowned upon. As Hearst explained about his decisions made on his animal worlds, dissecting animals purposely done in order to give the people a possibility to look at the animal in a new In an article by Ryan Fitz, Damien Hearst stated to him, Cutting up cows and sheep is like creating emotion scientifically. People feel sad but at the same time feel more intrigued by the beauty of seeing the subject. According to Caroline Goldstein, Hearst has dissected around 913,450 animals. I created something which was a life cycle, and then I remember thinking that flies are like little black dots. I remember watching a fly flying around and, and thinking that that's a great futurist sculpture. You could create this moving spatial thing. But then I worked out, oh, and what I'll do is I'll have a whole life cycle with flies, but they live, they die, they get killed. And then once I had that idea, then I, then I had no idea how to construct it or anything. I just knew that's what I wanted. Because I had such a lack of money, I spent a lot of time working on it. I remember when I first worked it out and did the sums for what it was going to cost to make it, I missed off the bolts, the nuts and bolts, and then the nuts and bolts were like a fortune, and I was like, oh God, why didn't I think of the nuts and bolts?
for really is that piece. I'd love to be the kind of artist that just made 70 or 80 pieces like that all my life and that was it. You know, I didn't do any of the other stuff. But I think that's not the point. You've got this journey and it's not about pulling it off every time. And you know, that's what's, that's, that's what's exciting really. Other works of hers include a painting of spots. In Hearst's paintings of spots, his motivation is his passion for colors and wants viewers to feel amazed to see all these amazing colors that brighten up the rooms. Hearst states, I've got an obsession with death, but I think it's like a celebration of life rather than something morbid. He felt that butterflies were a replica of life and that they were ugly before they bloomed with hairy bodies, then turning into their beautiful, vibrant colors flying everywhere. He has created a kaleidoscope painting in reference to the spiritual symbolism of the butterflies used by the Greeks to depict psyche, the soul, and in Christian imagery to, sig to signify resurrection. The title of my artwork is Follow Your Heart, with the medium being a photograph. Hearst was my inspiration because he shows artwork and wants viewers to think from a different perspective. For my artwork, I decided to show a child with papers in front of her. The papers are of a death certificate and divorce papers. I felt like this is something children go through. Most children go through their parents getting a divorce and they have to see their mother a weekend or vice versa. There is also a picture in front of the divorce papers of the child's parents while her father is wearing a military suit. I have included the colors gray, black, and blue to show the emotions that the child is feeling. She is sad, frustrated, and alone. I added a butterfly in the background because they show life and freedom. It is blue because of how the child is feeling sad and alone. <laughs> 